Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you guys how I take notes on my iPad. I have the iPad 2018 or the 6th generation iPad. This is the most basic version of the iPad that works with the Apple Pencil. I actually got this iPad for free because my dad opened a bank account and that bank was having a promotion at the time. I got this Apple Pencil off of Kijiji for $100. This case was about $30 from Amazon, I believe. Out of the 6 courses I had for grade 12, I took notes for 4 of them on my iPad. The rest of my notes were either on paper or I didn't have notes. That was usually the case. I started using it about two months into my grade 12 year. So yeah, let's get right into the video. First thing I'd like to show you guys before I dive into how I take notes is my case. I absolutely love this case for taking notes. It has so many different ways you can stand it up. So this is one way. You can technically take notes this way if you want, but I do find it's a little bit weird, the angle that your wrist has to be at to take notes like this. But it's very sturdy, as you can see because it's got this little tab right here. So I usually would just watch videos like that, or I can watch videos like this. How I take notes though is like this. My wrist is not at too weird of an angle versus being flat. If you take notes like this, I found I got some neck pain from looking down a lot. So when I have the case and the iPad, I don't have to look down as much because the iPad is kind of tilted at a slight angle. So this was really helpful in that sense. And also this case has this little slot here, just an elastic for the Apple Pencil, which I found very useful. So for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to leave my iPad lying flat. The app that I use is Notability. Once we open up Notability, you'll see on the left here, we have our quote unquote binders. I've just organized my binders based on subjects. The first thing I'm going to be showing you guys is just some basic features of Notability. To create a note, all you have to do is just click that button right there. And then you can change the paper to any of these options, or you can even change the color, but I usually don't use that. So I'll just leave it on blank for now. Of course, you can write with this pencil tool. You can change the width of the pen. You can also change whether you want it to be like a uniform line, no matter how much pressure you put, or depending on the pressure, changing the width more like a regular pencil stroke. Of course, you can change the color. And then with the highlighter, it's basically the same thing. You could change the width, the pressure, Thing, and then also the color and then with the eraser you can change whether you want it to be a whole erase or partial erase and then also you can change how big the eraser is this is a cutting tool I can just grab something and then move it around resize it things like that very handy this finger tool just turns the pen into a finger because normally if I was on this, I wouldn't be able to scroll with that. This is just a typing tool. I basically never use this because I like to handwrite my notes. You can also move that around as well. Then I can add a sticky, which I find is helpful. To move the sticky around, you just go like this. You can resize it, twist it, turn it. And then of course you can write on the sticky and if I wanted to move it around, the text moves with it, which is really cool. I can also take a photo, which is very handy for the board or whatever. Let's just say I wanted this diagram. What I would do is just simply take a photo. I would just click use photo, crop, crop it to just that diagram. I can resize it and put it where I want. And then of course I can write on the photo, which is really handy for diagrams and things like that. I can also share my note with other people, which is very handy as well. Other apps, I just have it as PDF format. And then generally I'll share on Messenger. So the way I take notes depends on the teaching style of the teacher. Let's start with physics. So if we click on the binder, you'll see that we have separated the binder into dividers. So if we click on any divider, you'll see all the notes under that unit. Each note is for one day or one lesson. What I would do to take notes is my teacher would post the PDF on 
Google Classroom. I can't access that right now, but I do have the PDF on Google Drive. I would click on the PDF before class, click on the three dots right there, click send a copy to Notability, swipe up, click Notability, create new note, make sure all three pages are selected into the divider light, the light unit, click import, and I'm gonna click open. And we have a fresh note ready to be written on. The most important feature, and the reason I chose Notability over Good Notes is this voice recording feature right here. So this feature actually lets you voice record and the voice recording will line up with your handwriting, which I think is really cool and it's so helpful. And I'm gonna play it. So this feature actually lets you voice record and the voice recording will line up with your handwriting. So I'm gonna pause the voice recording. Let's say I wanted to go to this slide. So when my teacher was talking about this slide. So what I would do, hold on a second. What I would do during the lesson is when he's talking about this slide, I would actually highlight the title just to know that I'm starting at that slide or the teacher is starting to talk about this slide. When I go back to study and let's say I come study and I don't understand this slide, go to the finger tool, I like click the on the highlighted. Know that I'm starting. You see how it took me to that exact slide so I don't have to listen to the whole voice recording again, trying to find the spot when my teacher talked about one particular topic. Would also like to mention for voice recordings, I only use them as a backup. I actually generally try not to go back when I'm studying to listen to the voice recording just because it is very time consuming and it's not an efficient way to study. So when I'm actually taking notes, I pretend that the voice recording feature doesn't exist. Another thing that I do is my physics teacher would have this exact PDF as a slideshow on the smart board. And then to the side, he would do a couple of examples on the whiteboard. So as he was doing those examples, I would just write down um, the example beneath the note, the corresponding um, section of the note. And then I can go back and look at that example. So that's really helpful. So for this note, um, what happened was my teacher forgot to upload the PDF before class. So I had to just write down things as he went, which was fine. I had the voice recording feature on, of course. I could go back and listen to the lesson, basically rewatch the lesson. And then I just took pictures of the actual slides. Because I have the voice recording feature, as I mentioned earlier, I like to pretend that voice recording feature doesn't exist because I still like to be actively paying attention in class and actively writing things down. So as I'm listening to the teacher talk, I will write down things that immediately jump out as important to me at that moment in the lesson. And it's just like regular paper taking notes. You write down what you think is important. And then if I wanted to, I could actually go back and listen to him talk about that exact part. By doing this, it ensures that I'm still engaged with the lesson. I'm still writing down the things that I think are important. This is an actual note that I took. As you can see, I kind of just drew arrows, destructive, constructive interference. And then also if the teacher asked the class a question, and then he would answer that question. I just wrote down the question that he asked because sometimes I pause and restart the recording to save space on my iPad. I would actually write down the question he asked if I didn't get that part in the recording, and then I can go to that question and then he would be talking to, about the response in the voice recording. So uh, that is a typical physics note. Now let's talk about Financial Securities, my teacher used a very similar note-taking method. Instead of physics, where he uploaded one for every day, he uploaded this whole document for the whole unit. You can see that I only have an hour, 40 minutes of recording for this class for the whole unit. That's just because I found for this class, it was significantly less content heavy than physics or any other STEM class. And so I didn't actually need to voice record that much because I basically never used the voice recordings because I was able to understand the lesson during the actual lesson. So again, I'd use the same method where I highlight the title so I can go to the title. Your best guess. And it would take me to the voice recording at that spot. Okay, this is really cool. So we were analyzing, don't even know what it's called anymore, a stock chart, I think. I went on the website he told us to go on and I took a screenshot and what other people did 
was he actually gave them a handout, I believe, of this exact stock chart. I just didn't take the paper. I told him I didn't need the paper and I went online and found the exact same chart and then I could write on it. So resistance lines, resistance line support and I could change the color as I did. And then I have a little legend right here as well. You can actually take a screenshot and I will show you how to do that right now. You can either take a screenshot or if you go like this, on Notability, I can actually drag the photo right on here. When you would wanna take a screenshot is if you're not actually on Google. Let's say I was on um, iBooks and I don't know, I was on a textbook and I wanted this chart. I obviously, that's not a picture, I can't drag it. So I would just take a screenshot, drag it. Come back on Notability, crop the photo to just the diagram, expand, or not expand, make the photo larger, move it around and I have that exact photo pretty easy. If I had done notes on paper, which I used to, I would actually have to go and print out the chart if I wanted a chart in my notes, which got quite tedious and annoying because I have to like cut and paste and glue. Another thing I wanted to point out for this class that I did was mind maps. So this is really handy if your teacher lets you because instead of doing a paper mind map where you'd have to cut everything out, arrange everything in the right spot before gluing it down because it was permanent, I can just basically start writing and then if I wanted to, I can use this tool and just move things around and also rotate them. What I did for this exact project was I handed it in by PDF. My teacher couldn't read it. And so during one of our work periods, I just gave him my actual iPad for him to mark. I don't think that method would work for university just because there's a lot of students per one professor. And I don't think the professor would have time to do that because they probably want everything in one place. But for high school, it definitely works. And plus this video is about how I took notes on my iPad in high school. So that's why I'm showing you guys that. One last thing for this class, we had to do a lot of article analysis. So what I would do is just download, again, using the same method, download this PDF onto the iPad, and then I can highlight things. And then sometimes there were questions. There was one question here. So I would just answer the question on here and then I'll just show you this one doesn't have that example. When the teacher was taking up the questions, I would voice record him again and then just jot down any other information that I thought I didn't have when I answered the question the first time. And now I'm gonna talk about my chemistry class because my teacher for this class used a slightly different teaching method. There was a period two chemistry and a period five chemistry. The same teacher taught both classes. I was in the period five class and instead of uploading PowerPoints or even having a PowerPoint. This teacher didn't have PowerPoints at all. She didn't really use a smart board actually. She just wrote everything on the whiteboard. And so she would write down the notes for the period two class and then 70% of the time she would leave the notes on the board. So when we came in for period five chemistry, we would just have to quickly copy down the notes and then she would start going over what was on the board and teaching the lesson. Before I had the iPad, I was like scrambling to write down everything and then she um, would start teaching the lesson or I would like take pictures on my phone and have to go home and remake the notes. But once I got the iPad, what I did was actually take pictures of the stuff she wrote on the board and then when she took up the lesson. When she started teaching lesson, I'd write things down. Also what this teacher did was she wrote questions that you had to answer and she would assign everybody a question to answer and you'd have to go up and write down your answer before she started teaching the lesson. And so they're basically like skeleton notes because they're not filled in. As you can see, the orange and the blue are what I wrote on afterwards. This was like one of the rare occasions where she used the smart board. But again, I took a picture of the board and then I wrote on top of that. These were just examples that she went through. Most of the time, this is what the note looked like. As you can see, there is a ton of writing. So having an iPad is so handy so I don't have to write down all of this stuff, um, especially if a lot of it is just like the actual question and then we had to go and do the question. 
Also what this teacher did was she would assign questions for us. It was a very interactive type of class where like the last 30 minutes she would have us actually go up in groups on the board and actually try to solve the question. Generally we would only have time to get to one or two of the questions and then so I would take a picture of the answers that someone else had done with my phone and then when I go home I would actually try the question myself and then write and like try the question on my iPad and I can just check the solution with the picture I took on my phone. Also very handy for this class, for the exam at least, my teacher just kind of wrote down what was on the exam for each unit. I took a picture of it and when I had time I wrote things down. So yeah, that's it for this class. And then finally, calculus. As you can see, I have all eight units here. So this teacher, her teaching style was basically a mix of chemistry and then physics and financial securities in the sense that she would upload the PDF beforehand and she did use a smart board to teach. However, she didn't upload the whole PDF, she would upload skeletal PDFs. So you have to show up to class to get the rest of the note. Sometimes we would have to do things on the boards. So basically when we went up to the boards, I would write down the answer on my iPad as we were doing it on the blackboards. Sometimes she would do an extra example on the blackboard, I would just write that down. And then, I, of course, as she taught the lesson, I would fill in the rest of the note that she would have on the smart board. I do not do my homework on my iPad. By homework, I mean like actually like problem solving on my iPad just because I have a lot of goose paper and I want to use up that as well so I'm not wasting any resources. But on the rare occasion that I do do homework on my iPad, as you can see, I started doing one question here. I would have the textbook Actually, it would more be like on the other side because I'm right-handed. I would have the textbook on this side and then, so like the question here, that's chemistry, wrong subject, but whatever. And then I would blah, 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 blah. And I can reference the textbook, oops, textbook and my note at the same time. I also have all my notes backed up on Google Drive. This is just to ensure that I always have a backup copy of my notes in case this app ever crashes or I lose my iPad. The last thing I wanted to say before I end the video is just obviously this is not how I study. This is not what my final note looks like. I actually do remake my notes and I'll talk about how I remake my notes in my how I study video. This is just good for going to class. I don't have to worry about how neat I make them which is why they're really messy. I will do an updated version of this, how I take notes on my iPad after I finish first year of university to see if my methods still work in first year, how I adjust my methods, things like that. But otherwise, yeah, I hope this video was really helpful. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I really hope that was helpful in terms of helping you decide whether to make an investment into an iPad or not. Otherwise, that's it for today and see you guys in the next video.